right, Lord. Home, away, it doesn't matter where. We want to give you the glory. We want to repossess this land, this church. This is our church right here. We don't worship football here. We worship you through the game of football, Father. And thank you for that. Thank you that both teams had the opportunity to do that. I pray that uh, you receive pleasure out of it. Father, as people leave here, I hope they're reminded of what you did on the cross for us, how you left heaven and came to earth and died for every one of our sins. Father, a clean slate. Everybody gets a clean slate. Anybody who places their faith in Jesus and Him alone for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, I thank you that you're not a dead God. That we don't talk about you historically. That you are alive. You rose from the dead. Father, may we enjoy the resurrection power of Christ and we make an intentional decision. As Matt talked about the chapel this, uh, the other night. Intentional decision, Father. Glorify you. Turn it out for you. That will produce fruit by serving us. You can serve others today, Father, by being grateful, humble, and victory. Father, we pray that you would heal injuries and, and get us back for practice sessions this week. May we spend tonight, Lord, glorifying you as well off this field for the decisions that we make. We give you the glory and honor. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, yeah, it's very important not to define yourself by the wins and the losses. Uh, I think you have to really look at the effort. You know, those are the things that a human being can decide and what he wants to do. And uh, to come to a, a saving faith in Jesus Christ, it is a decision. It's a decision that God made on a cross uh, 2,000 years ago to die on that cross, a decision he made for the forgiveness of our sins. We get to make the decision to receive, to receive that, that gift of grace that God gave us. And it is a gift because uh, we don't earn it. There isn't anything we can do to earn it. And we have to be careful that we don't define ourselves based on our efforts, uh, our, our earning power, and all of that. How we climb the ladder and etc. I think it's very important that we look beyond the win-loss record. You know, today, in today's game, for example, there were plays that were obviously good or bad. You know, we had uh, several times that we put the ball on the ground. I think uh, on our offense, I think we may have fumbled the ball five times. And we didn't lose all five, but we put the ball on the ground five times. Uh, that's not good. But it is possible that we were glorifying Jesus Christ on that particular play. Even the fumbler can glorify Christ if he did it with all of his might for the Lord Jesus Christ. There are other times where you might run for a long touchdown or throw a touchdown pass or make a big time tackle. And if your thought process and your consciousness was not geared and kicked into Christ, then it wasn't a God glorifying act at all. It was wood, hay, and stubble. God does not receive that. God does not like unholy offerings. And so one of the things that I think it's really important for those of you who particularly have kids in sports to find focal points. You know, this football, you know, if you could just point the camera over here to that goal post here, and, and you can see the goal post kind of reminds you of a cross, doesn't it? I mean, imagine Jesus Christ hanging on something that looked like that some 2,000 years ago. Well, that's a focal point to remind every Christian athlete that, you know, in the football field, every time you face, a, 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 you know, a, the play, you're facing a goalpost. You can be reminded of Christ hanging on the cross for you and the incredible extent that he went to out of, out of his love for you. And you can dedicate that play to Jesus Christ. I mean, it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity to give thanks. And one of the things that we prayed out in the middle of the field was that, God, thank you that this field is church. This is church for these guys. I'm not saying it replaces the local Sunday service and all of that that we do in our culture. But what I am saying is that this is a place of worship. We don't worship football. We don't worship anybody out here other than God. We worship God on the football field. And these, these lines that are painted out here, these are pews for these football players. They sit down and they can, they can apply the word of God that they learn from right out here on this football field. It's an awesome experience. I would challenge you parents out there to take your boys and girls and don't just ask them how many yards they gained in the game or who won the game. Those are all the, the wrong kind of questions. There's, not, there's nothing inherently wrong with those things, but really, if you want them to operate out of a paradigm that glorifies God, ask God glorifying questions like, who did you play for today? And if the, if the young man or girl says, well, you know, uh, I, I didn't play a, a, a whole lot today, then when you were on the bench, who, who were you living for at that point? Were you being self-serving, pouting, upset at the coach because you didn't get your chance to play? Or were you encouraging your teammates? A life in Christ always expresses itself through service. If you 
had a great day. And you say, well, I scored four, touch four touchdowns today. Ask your son or ask your daughter if she scored 30 points in a game. How many of them were unto the Lord? How many of the 30 points that you score were consciously, you were glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ in your thought process and that you were doing it for Him and that you were reminded of Him as you do it? Of those four touchdowns and all those yards that you got playing football, ask your son, you know, how much of that was unto the Lord? And when your coach decided to give somebody else the ball, were you willing to put every ounce of effort into blocking the way that Jesus Christ would block with great intensity and great unselfishness? Were you willing to do that even though the applause goes to people who score touchdowns? These are the things. We've got to learn how to ask key questions to our young athletes because when they become college athletes, how they've been trained is how they will live. We talk about God glorifying, it isn't about wins and losses, it isn't about how many yards you get, it's about the motivation that you play for. And it's because of Jesus' death on the cross, His resurrection from the dead, and that He offers that gift to every single man and woman and child on the planet. It's a gift of love if we will receive it. Out of that, those of us who have received that gift of love, out of our normal, reasonable expression of thankfulness for that love, it ought to just drive us to play the game for the Lord Jesus.